So you got yourself a Canon R7 or an R10. Good choice. I've been shooting with mine for a few months now, and I have to say, they're both compact little powerhouses. Now, whether you're into photography or videography or both, in this video, I'm gonna share seven must-have accessories that are gonna drastically improve the quality of your photos and videos. But before we get into that, there's two things that I would suggest that you buy before anything else. The first one is a spare battery. These modern mirrorless cameras are super lightweight and compact, but unfortunately, that also makes for small batteries that only last about an hour or so. So if you wanna shoot all day, you need to have one battery charging while you're using the other one. Now it took me months and a lot of trial and error to sort out which accessories are the best, both in terms of quality of results and price. And even though these are some of the best value items available for the R7 and the R10, by the time you accumulate everything you need, it can all add up to a significant investment. And that's why before you purchase any of these accessories, you should first get a camera bag. I've been using this bag from Caden for about about three years now, I only paid 60 bucks for it. And as you can see, it's still holding up just fine. And not only is this gonna protect all your gear from getting damaged, but it's also gonna protect it from getting stolen. Because this bag looks very similar to a normal backpack. So it's great for those times where you don't want people to know that you're carrying around a bunch of expensive camera gear. I'll leave links in the description to this bag, as well as all seven of the amazing accessories that I'm about to share with you. So the first must have item on our list is a tripod. One of the key ingredients to beautiful photography and videography is stability. No one likes shaky video footage or blurry photos. And when you have a good tripod, it's gonna eliminate those dreaded micro jitters, resulting in sharp photos and stable, smooth footage. The tripod that I've been using for the past two years is by a company called Benro, and it's my favorite heavy duty tripod. It's extremely well built, and easy to use. Now, if you're looking for a more lightweight travel type of tripod, there's a new one that just came out by a company called Ulanzi, and at the moment, that was your best bet. And when you pair your tripod up with the second item on our list, which is a good fluid head, it allows you to easily frame up and lock off your shots, as well as giving you those smooth pans and tilts in your videos. I would suggest this entry level one from a company called Newer. It's only 69 bucks, which is amazing value for money. Now, if you're looking for a higher quality, more professional fluid head for them buttery smooth pans and tilts, I would suggest you pick up one from Manfrotto, but I'll leave links in the description to both. Now moving on to our third item, which is a total game changer. If you've seen those expensive cinema cameras that range anywhere from $5,000 to $20,000, then you know that one feature that they have that sets them apart from prosumer cameras like the R7 and the R10 is the fact that they have internal NDs, which are crucial for situations when you're shooting outside and you wanna get that blurry background without your highlights being blown out, as well as in situations where you wanna do slow shutter style photography. Now in the past, the only alternative we had was to use screw-on and D filters. But they're a hassle to use because you gotta get a whole bunch of different filters for all your different lens sizes and you gotta constantly be screwing filters on and off. It's a horrible workflow. But then Canon came out with something called a drop-in ND filter. You attach it to your camera and then you can use it with any lens. So it totally eliminates the need for screw-on variable ND filters. But the problem is that it costs $500 it also has a slight color shift. And that's why this drop-in ND filter adapter from Mica is a total game changer, as it doesn't have that color shift that the Canon one has, and it only costs 160 bucks. And they also included a free clear filter, whereas Canon charges an extra $100 for their clear filter. And if all of that wasn't enough, Mica just released a CPL filter, a 1 4th strength black mist filter, and the 1 8 strength black mist filter. So this adapter is pretty much an all-in-one solution. And I'll leave links to the adapter and all the available filters below. So now that we have internal filters for the R7 and the R10, which makes them more similar to expensive cinema cameras, the next challenge that we have to overcome is the lack of APS-C RF mount lenses available on the market. But as I was mentioning earlier, the Mica drop-in ND filter also serves as an adapter, which allows you to use EF and EFS lenses on your R7 7 and R10. And there's three APS-C lenses that I own, which pretty much cover every focal range and every situation that I need. For my wide shots, I use the Canon 10 to 18 image stabilized EFS lens. This pretty much does the trick for real estate interiors and exteriors, vlogging, 
landscapes, or any other situation where I need a wide or ultra wide angle lens. And coming in only at 299 bucks, is super affordable. For all of my street photography, portraits, and B-roll footage where I need that beautiful blurry background, I use the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8, which I'm shooting on right now. This lens comes in at $700, but it's worth every penny. Not only is it a low light beast, but it's like having a bag full of primes as it's tacked sharp throughout the whole focal range and it's a constant f1.8 aperture. This very well may be the best APS-C lens ever made. For those long range telephoto situations, such as birding, sports, and wildlife, I like the Canon 55 to 250 millimeter image stabilized EFS lens. The video and the photos coming out of this lens makes it hard to believe that it's only $299. Now you may have heard famous photographers and videographers often saying that photography and videography is like painting with light. That's why it doesn't matter if you have the best lens on the market. If you don't have adequate light, you're not gonna be able to capture a pleasing image. Now when you're shooting outside at golden hour on a nice beautiful day, obviously the sun is your best friend. But oftentimes when you're shooting indoors, you don't have that luxury. And that's why the fifth must have item on our list is a key light and a soft box. And in my opinion, the best value key light is the Amaran 100D. It comes in at around $270. So if you're looking for a more budget friendly option that's still gonna give you good results, then the Godox SL60W is still king as it's only 130 bucks. Now when you pair either one of those lights with the soft box and a honeycomb grid, it's gonna work wonders for your photos and videos. Now assuming you have all of that in place and overall you're satisfied with the quality of your photos and videos, but you still feel like there's one little thing missing that you can't quite pinpoint. Most likely, the difference between those spectacular photos and videos that you're seeing online versus your images is the missing element of color grading and editing. And that's why the sixth must have item on our list is a professional suite of LUTs and Lightroom profiles. Now, if you like a lot of the photos and the videos that you've seen on my channel, I've pretty much captured all of that with the tools that I've laid out for you in this video. But the icing on the cake has been my custom LUTs and Lightroom profiles, which are available for only 15 bucks at fulancreative.com. Now, before we move on to the final item on our list, make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you liked the video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. If you want to be notified every time I release a video, then go ahead and hit that little bell icon as well. Now, whether you shoot a lot of video like me, or if all you mainly do is photography, inevitably, you're eventually gonna find yourself in a situation where you have to record a video clip or two. All the accessories that I've shared with you so far have been for the visual side of things. You've probably heard the phrase, audio is half a video. And some would even say that the audio quality is more important than the video quality. So imagine if I had shot this whole video with the built-in mic that's on my camera. The audio would sound something like this, which is horrible and totally unacceptable. And the microphone that I've been using for this whole video is a $36 shotgun microphone that I stumbled across by accident. And even though it's budget friendly, it sounds every bit as good as many of them expensive microphones out there. And that's why you should most definitely watch this video right here, where I tell you about the hilarious incident which led me to this gem of a microphone. I hope you gained something from this video and I'll see you in the next one. It's your boy Fulan Creative and I'm out. Peace.